All right. When we first learned about dislocations, we said that they have strain fields associated with them. For example, if you've got an edge dislocation, it's really easy to see that in the region where you have that extra plane, you're going to have compressive stress, right? So if you have two of these things next to each other, those compressive stress regions are close to each other. And underneath the dislocation, you're going to have tensile regions, right? So again, if these things are right next to each other, then they're going to be at the same size. So imagine what would happen. If these things came together, then you're going to have a really severe tensile region and a really severe compressive region. That's not going to happen. Therefore, dislocations of the same sign that are right next to each other repel one another. Right? They're going to repel one another. Okay. Um, but if they were opposite sign, if you had one dislocation that was like this and he had another one like that, then what do you have? Well, then you've got your compressive regions opposite to one another, and the tensile regions are also opposite. And so now you're going to get an attraction between these different regions, right? Since this one's crowded over here and this one's not crowded, they're going to want to come together, and then they annihilate, right? Annihilation occurs, and you get rid of both dislocations if they're opposite signed. Now, on average in a material, if you have more and more and more dislocations, on average they repel one another because it takes very specific situations like this for them to attract and annihilate. So overall, the more dislocations, the more uh, difficult it is for them to interact with one another. They're going to overall repel one another. Okay. Um, let's see some instances of how these strain fields interact in some videos. All right, this first video shows. Um, a, a crystal here made out of bubbles. Again, this is another bubble wrap video. Take a look at what happens here. They're going to strain this material by poking it with a stick, and you can see you've got one dislocation here and another dislocation. And as they start to move this towards it, take it out, take a look. They combine to form a third one going a different direction. Okay. Well, what else can we have happen? Right. You can have them stacking up to interact with one another. Here we see that. Here's a bunch of dislocations, right? These things are almost on the same plane. They're just off, but these are repelling one another, so there's a gap between them. But these ones are stacking vertically, right? Let's take a look at this. He's going to move it and get one of these to move down so they stack vertically. So as they deform this material, right, he's going to drag it and move this one up. You can see what will happen as they're doing this. As he drags this one up, you'll see that the strain fields interact with one another. So we move that one there, and all of a sudden, they automatically stack vertically. So why are they stacking vertically? Again, you could picture it like this, right? Each one of these has compression here, compression here, compression here, tension here, tension here, tension here. And so you get these regions of your diagram where these things overlap with one another. The tension and the compression regions overlapping is good. That's making that's what the crystal wants to have happen is those things overlapping because if you're going to be strained two different types when you put them together, it reduces the overall strain. Therefore, it's not surprising that when they move this one down, when they move it down here, that this one is able to also line up so they can continue stacking up. And that's what we see happening in this video, that now they're able to line up one with another. The last thing we're going to see is how these things interact with an impurity. Here they've put a different sized bubble in, either larger or smaller. It looks larger to me. And so it's straining this lattice. Well, what will that do when a dislocation comes nearby it? Let's go ahead and watch. So keep your eye on this dislocation and this larger impurity atom and what the dislocation does. The dislocation parks there and it parks there. These two have both stayed put, right? Other dislocations are moving, but those ones are staying right there in the vicinity of the impurity. So why? Think about what's happening there. If you have an impurity, again, this region right here is under uh, tension, right? It's too large. There's too much area and not enough bubble there. So if you've got a really large impurity atom, a big one like that, then it's going to help fill some of that open space that it didn't want to have so open. So once a dislocation finds an impurity, it's going to be more likely to stay put there. This is the exact same reason why we do um, sterling silver. Sterling silver, you put an impurity, copper atom, in the otherwise silver lattice, and then dislocations, when they're moving through the material, they're going to stop when they hit one of those dislocations. And if a dislocation stops, then you've changed the mechanical properties. We're going to talk more about that in just a minute when we get to strengthening mechanisms. Um, so again, 
dislocations will stack up vertically. You can see these bands of dislocations in materials. If you etch a material, then you can get it to preferentially dissolve the regions near these dislocations. And you can see that they have a certain distance where they separate each other. Why are they separating? Because again, these compressive regions are repelling one another, but they're also a, you also get this uh, interaction between these compressive and tensile regions, so they're stacking up, right? So that's why you get bands of dislocations in a material.